So if you dislike or maybe even hate your job and you're looking for a way out but don't know how because maybe you might be not spending enough time with uh, your loved ones or your friends and not spending time the things you want to really do such as hobbies and interests or maybe you're not being paid your worth and the kind of prospect of what you're being paid is starting to dawn on you and the restrictions that has on your life. Or maybe you're just battling with heaps and heaps of stress due to the workload, whatever job you're going through. Well, pay very close attention to this video because I'm gonna share with you six ways you can start your own business and gain your own freedom. So if you listen to my podcast or maybe you follow me on social media, it would be no surprise to you that I don't believe anyone on planet Earth should sacrifice their happiness for a wage or a pension. We're here for one life, one opportunity. We're not coming back. So we want to make the most of it, right? So we can look back on our life and thinking, yeah, we had a good one. We didn't stay somewhere that we really know deep down we don't want to be at. So essentially what myself and my team does, we help those who really dislike their jobs, they hate their jobs, they want to make a change, primarily from the public sector, so you've got your police officers, your nurses, your teachers, etc., to start something that they own, start something that's meaningful to them so they can gain freedom in their lives and make that change in their lives. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the methodology, the process, the journey that uh, we teach that we go through with our members, allowing them to gain freedom and ultimately a completely different life. Now, some of our clients have resigned inside a year. They've come off antidepressant medication. They've built six-figure businesses. They have absolutely smashed it. Some are on their journey right now as well, so they're starting all the time. And I'm gonna share with you the exact process that those guys go through so you can start piecing this together yourself if you want to do it yourself. So this is our process and this is our journey that I'm gonna walk you through. Now, I just wanna say that this process is not designed to help you achieve a million pounds or a billion or 500 million. It's a process designed to help you achieve freedom from the job you dislike or hate. So that's a financial independence. Your financial independence number might vary from someone else's. So yours might be 50,000 pound or 80,000 or 100,000 or 250,000, whatever it may be, this process is allowing you to gain that whilst working full time in your job so you don't run the risk of kind of stressing about finances and anything like that because um, that's what we don't want. We don't want people just jumping ship in a blaze of glory and quitting their job. Um, that's not what we're about. So I'm going to walk you through this and hopefully you get plenty of insights from it going forward. So first of all, I want to talk about the, you know, the imprisoned existence and the extraordinary life. So we found through, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of researchers, we've had generated, you know, thousands of leads as well, um, that we're finding very common problems in the public sector in relation to people's jobs. And a lot of people find themselves in kind of one or all of these brackets. So the first one is no time. People who are working shift after shift, they may not have uh, they will make them feel that they haven't got the time to, you know, spend time with family as much. It could be they haven't got time to spend with their uh, loved ones on holiday. It could be that their annual leave is not being accepted. It could be that their annual leave is being rejected. It could mean that they're working every Christmas and New Year. It could mean that um, they are unfortunately having to choose between their personal life and their work life. Okay, so that's number one. That's the kind of the big problem that people find themselves in. The next one is low income. So a lot of people that we speak to from the public sector, they're not valued for the work they do. They feel like they're not being paid their worth. And there's a glass ceiling on what they can earn. And of course, you can go for a promotion or work in overtime. But the only issue with that is typically they put themselves in the same environment that's causing them these three issues. So the low income kind of impacts them in their personal life. So they may have to restrict back on going out for meals or it could be travel or, you know, kind of sidestepping that dream house they want. And, you know, life again is about abundance. So we want to make sure that that isn't a big problem in people's lives. And the next one is damaging stress. So a lot of people, and there's loads of studies on Gallup as well, according to this, that so many people find themselves highly stressed in relation to their job role. And this can come in all forms. It could be that they're 
their boss is a bit of an idiot. It could be that their workload is too high. It could be that they're traveling so far out to gain to their work every single day and they've got to travel back every single day. It could be that their culture is toxic. There's loads of things that fall under damaging stress. So a lot of people find themselves in the, one of those three areas or all of them. And if it's all of them, that's a big, big problem. But nonetheless, if one of these is impacting you, you know, you probably feel like you're trapped. You feel like you're living, but you're not truly living, right? You're just going to work every single day. You may be paying for the house that you leave empty all day and you don't really feel, uh, feel fulfilled. So a lot of people would say that they actually feel imprisoned by their existence because of their job. And what we found is that where people want to be is that they want to be highly rewarded. They want to be paid their worth. They want to have um, no kind of ceiling on the limit of amount of money they can earn. And that creates real true abundance in their life. And also gives them a lot more opportunity in their life too, to experience things in life, whether that's holiday or taking the kids to Disneyland, or it could be uh, buying a house, their dream house, or maybe uh, treating someone that they love. And unfortunately, with a low income, you're just not going to get that. So people want to be highly rewarded for their work and they're willing to work for it. The next one is freedom. So, you know, doing what you want, when you want, with who you want, as much as you want is a big, big thing that people want in relation to a new life. Um, the common denominator of happiness is control. And when people feel like they haven't got control in their lives, that happiness dwindles. And there's a great book I highly recommend called The uh, Psychology of Money um, that goes into detail about that. And essentially that control is due to the ability to earn what you like. So freedom follows on from highly rewarded. And lastly is passion. Everyone wants to feel passion doing what they love, essentially. And a lot of people that we speak to find that they were passionate about their jobs once upon a time, but as time's gone on and as you know policies have changed and maybe new management's come in or you know pay freezes have happened, things have changed negatively and that passion has dwindled. So what they want is that passion back in building something that is for them. It's something that they control, something that they own. So now we know where people are and we now know where people want to be. I'm going to talk about the process that uh, our members go through. It's the same process I took as well when I was working in the police force. And also it's the process you can take allowing you to get you from where you are to where you want to be. From that imprisoned existence or feeling like you're imprisoned to that extraordinary life where sometimes we look online and we see these people who are living these amazing free lives. Well, you can gain that too. And actually it's not as complicated as you think. So in full transparency, I'm going to talk you through this. So the first one is ideas. You're going to need a business idea, right? And you're not going to get very far building a business without a business idea. So this isn't just actually about the idea itself either. This is actually about the business for the idea. So there's a great quote that Andrew Priestley, one of my good friends, would say, everyone has an idea for a business, but what they don't have is the business for the idea. Let me say that again. Everyone has an idea for a business, but not the business for the idea. So in this kind of step, we go into who is your target customer? Um, what is the value proposition that you offer? Which basically means what problems are you solving for your customers in business? What makes you unique? What's gonna make you stand out? Is there demand? You know, what are their core three problems that you're gonna identify? And what is the solution you're gonna help with? So really think about not just the business idea in itself, but actually go into deeper how you're going to actually work that. So the next key step is around planning. Now, what I found is that many people, you know, spend uh, time planning their holiday or their trip away. But when it comes to their financial future, they give that job or that responsibility to their employer. And that can be very damaging because your employer has different thoughts than you. So planning in your business around your financial forecast, so planning your finances. So what I mean by this is what expected sales do you want to bring in uh, month by month? What are the costs associated with those sales? What are the operating costs in your business? Which is ultimately going to give you net, net profit. But also by looking into this, it allows you to look at the gross profit margin and also that net profit margin. Really, really important for business. 
Also, a basic business plan. Now, for me, I found value in actually doing a business plan and not actually um, using it. So let me explain. I've never used a business plan to raise finance from the bank or anything like that. But by writing down a plan, it allows me to not miss the things that a solid business plan would, would encourage me to look into. So um, such things as your financial forecast, such things as your marketing plan, such things as uh, your target customer, the niche and the market share and what is available out there in the, the world of business. So that's really important. It becomes your map to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Other things such as insurances. Uh, what insurances do you need to uh, go for and when? Um, things like the Information Commissioner's Office that a lot of people forget about to make sure you're in alignment with data protection. So planning is really knuckling down to the kind of the nitty gritty of business, but also it could mean that you're setting goals along the way, setting a vision for your business, setting a mission for your business, which is helping your customers achieve what they want to achieve, and also making sure you're building a culture in your own business which represents your values. So that kind of is all in the planning stage. The next is about branding, and branding is about um, not only just a logo, which a lot of people kind of run into. They just get a logo or they name a company that they like, forgetting the reason of why they're in business. They've got to attract customers. So naming something that you like or picking a logo that you like may be detrimental if that's not having a impact on your customers, if that's not attracting them to you, okay? The way I like to look at this is if... Um, you've got your business and then your competitors and you both said exactly the same thing. You sell exactly the same, same pricing. Everything is literally pitch perfect, exactly the same. But your competitors look better. They've got better branding. They are going to win that business hands down, okay? Hands down because they're attracting, they're psychologically pulling their customers towards them. So when it comes to branding, it's not just about a logo, guys. It's about how you name your company, the strap line of your company, the color psychology of your company. It's about the imagery you use. All of these create a brand asset which are either going to repel, hopefully not if you do it correctly, but either attract to. And that's what we want with people attracting to you, almost like magnetized to our brand. The next key thing is all around implementation, also known as marketing, which we start to implement the things we've learned from the three previous steps and more. So this is about how you're going to get visible, how you're going to be out there in the marketplace. You know, obscurity in business, unfortunately, will kill your business. And we do not want that. Um, we want to make sure we're getting customers. People know who we are and what we do. So that's really key. The next one is the content strategy. What type of content we're going to create just like this that I'm creating right now, allowing our customers to learn more about us. I'm not a big fan of selling on content whatsoever, so you wanna make sure it's highly valuable content that your customers deem valuable. And also, what kind of systems are you gonna to use to generate leads? And what software are you gonna to use to store those leads? So you're gonna use Facebook ads, Google ads, are you gonna use search engine optimization? Are you gonna do um, email marketing? And what platforms are you gonna use for that? So all those are really key in relation to actually generating leads and more importantly, nurturing those leads, building quality relationships with those leads because not everyone's going to be right for buying right now. The next key step is around products and products is essentially what you're going to be offering, your offer to solve your customer's problem. And many people make the mistake of starting there in business when, as we know now, the big secret is actually starting with ideas, okay? The problems of your customers. But by knowing the problems, you now can create a product. And essentially, this product should be remarkable. It should solve them in a very attractive way. And in products too, you can create something called an integrated product suite. So it allows your customers to go on a buying journey with you instead of just buying your thousand pound product straight away. They actually build up to it and also, by doing that, it makes you more profitable in the process. And also, it qualifies people's in and quali qualifies people out, which is a big, big thing. And next is sales. Guys, I, I've mentioned you know five previous steps. You could have nailed them all to a T. But if you're not generating sales, the sixth step, you don't have a business. And in fact, you're not in business until you make that first sale. 
So sales is all around the sales psychology, the sales mindset, because a lot of people get it twisted when it comes to sales. They feel like it's cringy and people are out for scam them, um, which is a lot of to do with our own internal conflicts. It could be that uh, we're asking about the business. So a lot of people, when they have a sales conversation with someone, they just don't ask for the business the right way, which ultimately don't doesn't get them the result they want. This is about ensuring you're following up, ensuring you're handling objections like a pro, dealing with inbound and outbound inquiries in a professional way. And ultimately, this, this step here is gonna give you the freedom you want from the job you dislike or hate. So guys, this is the six steps that I highly recommend you look into and you start developing. Um, if you can do it on your own, fantastic, go for it. And again, you don't have to implement all of these right away at all, because if you do that, you're probably gonna go a bit crazy. So follow on each step, and as you work through them, lo and, lo and behold, you'll get towards that sales aspect where actually you're sitting in front of a customer and they're ready to buy. So I hope you've got value from this, and if you have got value, please do give me a thumbs up and also subscribe. That goes really far for the algorithm. And if you've got any questions whatsoever, drop them in the comments below. I'll make sure I get back to you and answer them as quick as possible. And in the meantime, guys, I'll be seeing you on the next episode. Cheers. Mm -hmm.